Yeah, I'm Rush. I uh, I observe uh, quite a lot of CS:GO games for ESL. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's a fun job. I quite like it a lot. I play a lot of CS, so I'm very thankful to have this position. But yeah, my role, basically, what I'm doing is controlling most things that people see when in game. Like okay. Outside of the game, we have all these cameramen. I'm basically a cameraman in the server. But what does observing look like at a big tournament? Is there a team? Is it just you? What's oh, the yeah. setup like? So at, a, at one of these scale tournaments, we have like a full team. Okay. Like we have around six guys, I would say, pretty much. Per match? Pretty much per match, yeah. Okay. I'd say so. Like we have a main observer typically, which is the person cutting like just from player to player, like who, who we think is going to get like all the good action and stuff like that. Then we have like a cinematic guy who like gets all the cool overviews and stuff like that. And then we have a, a separate replay observer who catches all the frags that I miss, which okay. that doesn't happen. I catch every single frag on the server, so that never happens anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's three of you. That's the uh, three main ones, yeah. But okay. Then there are a few more guys behind the scenes. We have the guys like coding the HUD and stuff like that. Okay. So these guys aren't really doing as much while the game is live, but they've done a lot of prep work for the games in okay. general. Yeah. Okay, and and these, I mean, the guy who gets the fancy camera angles, does, does he sit and program these before the game? Yes, that's the best thing about CSGO. We can pre-program everything. Okay. Like, all, we have so many cameras for every single map, different okay. situations, basically any anything you can think of, we pretty much have a camera Okay. For. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to go too much into technicalities, mm -hmm. but I have to ask you something. Yep. So, you're basically hitting number buttons to switch between each player. Yes, correct. I, on a keyboard... We have 10 players, which is very lucky with CS, because other games, like, if you're observing a Barreal game, there's 100 players, and that's obviously a lot hard. I don't know how I don't, they do that. I don't think there are 100 keys on the keyboard. No, exactly, yeah. So I don't know how they do it. For me, it's very easy. I have a keyboard. I have it laid out. So all the num number keys at the top, the first five are one team, and then the rest are the other team. So I, okay. keep, I basically keep one hand per team. Okay. And then I just... it's Keep switching? Yeah, and I keep my hands on the keyboard all the time. Okay. Like, it's very rare you'll see an observer take the hands off the keyboard and then individually press each key. We'll basically have our hands across the entire keyboard so we can hit anything we want at any time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get into a little bit more about observing, and I think, I'm sure, yeah, I've, I've asked a few observers this question. Yep. Uh, I'd like to know what's your answer. What's your least favorite map to observe? Uh, well, every, every observer is going to say the exact same map. Nuke? Nuke, of okay. course. It's just so difficult. There's just the, the layers, there's too many layers. They, how, how do you approach Nuke? Is there, is there a trick? You just, the, the only solution really is just to stay hyper aware. Like, being okay. constantly aware of everyone is, it's... Like, a lot of rounds aren't, aren't too bad. If people are rushing sites or rushing ramp or rushing air or something like that, it's not too hard then because you pretty much know who's going to get the action. But it's the problem is when it's like there's a minute gone in the round and all five players are still alive. Some people have gone down secret. Some people are, like, flanking over to heaven and stuff like that. That's when it gets... That's, okay. That's tough. Um, do you... I, I mean, the, again, like, a lot of folks are trying to get into this path in esports. Mm. Uh, do you have any tips or tricks or suggestions to newer observers? It's a very tough field. I think a lot of observers kind of get into this a lot through luck. Okay. Like that's how it fell in my case. Uh, so like really I would say try to find like smaller tournaments and just kind of, I don't know, just try and it's, it's a tough one. Like there's a lot of demos. You could like have a show reel on your YouTube channel showing like a, what, you've ki what you can kind of do in terms of cameras and stuff like that. Okay. But like, uh, yeah, try to find small tournaments and just Keep doing Try it. To do something. Yeah. A any, any, any. I mean, any trade tips such as like begin from a CT perspective. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a lot of philosophies I like to do. Like. Oh yeah, please, I'd love to hear yeah. those. So like, and the main one is at the start of a round, everybody's splitting off. No action's gonna happen. So right. it's really up to you who you follow. I like to kind of show if if there's a guy who has like a good spawn for something, like on Dust2, for example, if someone has a long spawn, a lot of the times they will try to take that and use it. So it's always good to look at player positions like that. Okay. And if that doesn't happen, there's usually a bit of a lull in the round where people are really just posturing around the map, taking info of certain areas. Like you might have CTs flashing in certain areas. It's like most of the time I can see that stuff coming because I've seen so much of it. I know if this guy's standing here and this guy's standing here, they're probably all going to like flash push into a certain area. So okay. Like that's there are certain things you just notice with time, but yeah, that's that's how. It right. Is. I mean, just just by virtue of having done this like ten thousand times, you yeah, read the game really well, course, so you yeah. see plays coming. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, I I think that's that's one of the hardest aspects about CS because sometimes there there are two different fights happening at different parts mm, of the map. Yes. How do you choose? Really, you should focus on really wherever the bomb is going. Okay. A lot of the times when there are multiple fights going on, in pro games at least, if I observe a matchmaking game, it's a, it's a, it's chaos. I okay. Mean, everyone's fighting everyone at the same time. But in a lot of cases in CS, people will be 
like having one lurker role and I'll try to show him for as long as I can until action comes in with the bomb so people are aware like if that guy gets a kill they know where they got the kill they may not see the kill coming in but the luxury of this event we have like an extra pip that comes in and we can show uh, any player we want so mm -hmm. like if a bomb is about to push into a site and there's a lurker I could tell my guy to the left hey can you put this guy in that camera and then we can you can still watch the lurker if you want because it's a good chance he might not even do anything anyway so I don't really want to stick on him for that and then okay. I can catch all the main action so so you follow the bomb and the secondary action is picture in picture yes yeah. I mean I mean already a couple of great tips F look out for spawns because spawns are something that players like to abuse Definitely. and obviously by watching the game many many times you get an idea of what teams when teams are lining up and execute Definitely. when rotations are coming in mm -hmm. that, 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 that's good stuff um, I, I think um, a very important aspect uh, of an observer and this is something I actually saw I mean in, in my process of researching for this I saw a reddit post mm -hmm. uh, what's the kind of interplay that you have uh, between yourself and the casters mm, yeah casters help a, a lot with a lot of cases the best thing is where a caster talks about something which I'm even missing like they, they may call out a flanker and I'm st like so focused on one part of the map and then they'll like mention it and then that's always good for me because then I can hop on it but usually I try to follow what the casters are talking about okay especially if like it's a little part of the round they will often be talking about people's positions and stuff and I think it's good to show where they are so like people can actually visually see that and then not just have the caster's word for it. So right. uh, I would say a, a good amount of it is that. Yeah. Right. I mean, but there's a this fine line between just following the casters and sometimes even the casters might be blindsided and they're missing action. So yeah, you sometimes is, ignore the a, casters. There is a phrase called castabated, which okay. is like the caster <laughs> will hype up something or talk about something. And uh, but the action is elsewhere. Maybe I see the action coming in elsewhere and I know something else might happen and so sometimes I have to ignore it. I would prefer not to, but there are times that I've been right. baited into that. And I, I, some stuff. I'm just curious. I mean, I know how this functions in some other esports titles, but do casters just work with the feed of your view or are they also observing? They usually, usually have uh, the program feed, which will have my view, and yeah. then they'll also be in the server themselves. Like I know some casters like to cast off the minimap alone at times as well, so they can basically see everything. Like Because okay. like, when I observe, I basically... Mostly I'm observing off the large mini map because mm -hmm. you can just see so much more information. You can see where smokes have landed and stuff like that. So really? you know if there's someone, yeah, because like if you observe off the tiny mini map, sometimes two guys might be like looking right at each other, but there might be a smoke in the way and they'll just not end up seeing each other for like 15 seconds. Or okay. So. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I didn't know that one. Um, who's your favorite duo of casters well, to work with? That's a tough one. I love hearing Henry and G and Sadakus. Okay. Like, those guys make me laugh a lot. But I mean, this event and past events, Hugo and Harry is like, to me, my favorite casters are whichever ones make me laugh while observing. And okay. Aaron Hugo and Henry and Sadikis, they're so good at that stuff. Okay. So, so good. Okay. Um, uh, I think we pretty much covered most of it. Just a couple of questions to close things out. Uh, where, where do you see observing going down in the future? Do you think there's scope for Val to improve what observing could be? Do, do, do you think there's something that you want to add and yeah. to improvise with in observing? There definitely are things that could be made better, especially on the large minimap. There's still certain information which isn't shown. Like, uh, I think it would be useful to show where people are looking. Like, you only really have the dot with the number inside, and you can't really tell which direction they're looking at times. So sometimes switcher guys looking into a wall or something like that. Right. It's not as nice to show. Right. Uh, there are times when people boost as well on the minimap where they're not one on top of each other. It's just, it doesn't decide, like, it's just random, basically. So if someone's boosting, it's really hard to tell who's on top. Uh, there's another case where there are no mollies shown on the minimap as well, which is, that's kind of sad because... Like you can see smoke grenades and stuff like that. Yeah. So the more information, the better, really. I mean, we didn't get any of that, but we did get a battle royale. Yeah, that's Thoughts? true. That's true. The battle royale, you know, I'm fine with it. You know, I've played some. I'm not a huge fan of the slow battle royales like PUBG and all those kind of stuff. Okay. Because I feel like you run across the field, someone shoots at you. If you're in the bad spot, that you just dead. It's, it's dead. I played yeah. a bit of Fortnite. I did get into that. I, I enjoyed that. As as many people hate on that game, I think it's a very well-made game. Like I love being able to run across the field, not worry about anything, build a wall, and that's great. But the CSGO BR, I think it's good because it's like very little players, small map, and they're trying a unique way with it. And I think that's very good. Okay. Um, I, I, I mean, uh, you, you've been to so many lands, so yeah. many ESL Quite lands. Fair, yeah. Could you just share some of the funny anecdotes that we as viewers or media don't get to see behind the scene? I, I, I know CSGO is wild. I've, I've even been told that sometimes on the desk, people are just wearing suits, but down below they're just wearing oh, shots yes. yeah that, that's definitely happened in the past yeah I mean, luckily i'm in the production room so we can get away with whatever we want to wear ah, the most that's part, okay which yeah is good you know it's very rare we're on camera like this yeah mm, tomfoolery there's there's always a bit going on in the control room everyone's usually having trying to have a good time no one wants to be sad in there so yeah, okay always joking around and stuff like that so okay it's a it's a light-hearted environment back there but nothing okay. nothing crazy goes on 
But there are many times where we've had like issues which we've managed to hide quite well. Oh yeah. Say like uh, if our observer PC crashes, then we always have like a backup and stuff, and we're mm -hmm. very quick to change to that. So there's there's always issues that happen for us, but usually we're pretty good at hiding it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's about it, uh, Alex. Thank yep. you so much for it's giving us your time. Uh, do hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're going to be coming with a lot more content from ESL Pro League. Go dance. This is Vivek from AFK Gaming. Goodbye. Um,